What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today I got another episode of uh, Bill Burr. I, I don't know why his name was like flipping on me for a second, like I'm, I'm looking at it. <laughs> uh, another Bill Burr video for you guys. Um, this looks like a rather old uh, clip. This is Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes, and Harlem. So that's a lot of topics that can go a lot of different ways, but you know Bill Burr doesn't give a damn, and I actually applaud the man for it. Um, He's not somebody that caves in to the pressure of uh, what society wants. And, you know, people that think that comedy has some type of line that it absolutely cannot cross, which to me is bullcrap. If it's funny, then by all means, go there. Uh, comedy should be the one extension of entertainment that doesn't have to worry about catering to towards people's feelings or catering towards... Uh, some norm that we have for some reason put on it like comedy should be the one avenue that anything should be okay as long as if it's funny but uh let's go ahead and check this out see what it has to offer i'm not even sure of the special that this is from this looks like the background makes it seem like it's from def jam <laughs> but i don't know exactly where this came from but uh let's go and check it out see what it has to offer <laughs> actually i got a couple of uh, friends of uh african persuasion <laughs> and uh, I gotta get rid of him, man. I gotta admit to you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I gotta, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. <laughs> it's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I iron the shit, right? <laughs> I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep well, up with before them. Before they get into trashing them. I did want to, I want to, every once in a while I'll pause it and I'll make comments. Um, now, when it comes to clothes and stuff, now that's true. With some black people, yeah, we spend a lot of money on clothes that we honestly should not be spending. I don't like the mindset of it, but to each their own, you want to have fun, have fun. Now, it's the shoes that makes the difference. Now, that is something that's universally accepted among all black people. Like, you cannot come anywhere with no busted ass shoes. And I don't want to sound prejudiced when I say this, but it kind of is because I'm prejudging something. Um, there's a lot of white people that don't really care about how, like they don't, like shoes tend to be the like the, the least prioritized thing on their wardrobe. Whereas with black folks, shoes are the biggest. That's the reason why you can get into a fight for stepping on somebody's shoes. Like we don't take dirt and uh, wear and tear on our shoes well. Like we will get new shoes all the damn time. The problem is shoes tend to be expensive. Now, again, that goes into certain mindsets. I was somebody that was a bit of a sneakerhead when I first started working. When I was getting my first checks when I was younger, I was a sneakerhead. I would go get all the Jordans. I would get all the Nikes. I would get all the cleaning equipment and utensils. I, I bought paint. I bought specific brushes. I bought specific scrubs for different uh, materials like leather and uh, new buck and suede and everything else and I made sure that I had everything on point so that like if something happened to my shoes I can get home and I could clean it or repair it in some way so yeah in a way that's kind of true <laughs> now you guys can leave your opinions in the comment section down below I would be interested in hearing what you got to say uh, let's continue they just start trashing me I can't keep up with them man they got like fucking 58 Pairs of sneakers. <laughs> Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give yeah, a shit you... what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. I'm about to say you got to coordinate. <laughs> you got to like coordinate. <laughs> They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you got to like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Because God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10-day period. One of them's going to notice. All of a sudden, just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. I think that's and associated with like, like, oh, shit. It possibly being dirty. Then everybody just started making fun of you. Fucking close. First, they do the math. Like, what was that, five days ago? Five days ago, motherfucker got five shirts. He got five yeah. shirts. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And they start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. That shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't wearing no shirt. 
Bill Burr would be a great black com uh, comic. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. <laughs> when I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. <laughs> no, I was like the typical white dude from like, the suburbs, you know what I mean? Had no frame of reference, you know? My only frame of reference with black people was like, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible. Do <laughs> the you know? L.A. riots in there. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, so he's got nice cars, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Well, the black dude scares me. Uh -huh. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out in my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit. That they're gonna let go. The yeah. immediate shit that they have on. Everything so else go, doesn't matter. If his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked exactly. up. Exactly. He does not Every give a fuck. <laughs> in the whole neighborhood. Oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone sucks making fun of him. <laughs> He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying. I'm paying attention. <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, Black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we is that hung Mia? out like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. That could be Mia. So shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning, and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. That's, ooh, wait a minute, huh? We're gonna have to an analyze this uh, scenario, man. Three o'clock in the morning, she calls you to her apartment. So already that that's a plus. We know what usually when someone uh, sends you, uh, like messages you and wants you to come to their apartment at three o'clock in the morning, you tend to know what that means. <laughs> there's only one one reason why you would, or I guess there's a couple reasons, but the one main reason I'm I'm sure she's not a drug addict or some stuff. So there's no reason why you should be going for that for anything related to that. So that only leaves one thing in my mind, and it's usually a, a good thing. But she's in Harlem. Three o'clock in the morning at Harlem. Usually, there's nothing bad or there's nothing good going on in the streets at 3 a.m. in just about any major city, let alone Harlem. So it's like, okay, you're kind of you're kind of putting yourself in a position of taking a chance on this one. Now, I guess the question is: Is that gamble worth it? Are you willing to accept? the reward at the cost of the possible risk <laughs> and i mean as a black dude i probably would not have as much of a risk as him going to harlem at three in the morning but um yeah, i mean for me it'll be worth it i guess I, I, we're going to continue to listen to this about whether or not he took that bet but i want to hear in the comment section what do you guys what would you guys do in this situation like three o'clock in the morning um even though he says harlem there are some decent parts of harlem i'm guessing he means like a bad neighborhood so three o'clock in the morning bad neighborhood in harlem girl asks you to come up you with that uh are you woke message so what are you going to do in this situation leave comments down below i look so it's a fucking situation Cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, like, ah, oh, fuck, we're starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? You feel that? 106th street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? <laughs> How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> Dude, what's a bodega? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I'm praying to God she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? I give. Goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street. God damn. Uh. Just a quick mess uh, note. I give people in New York and stuff all the credit. I don't do public transportation. I've, I've only ridden a bus a couple times in my life, 
and that is the most as far as public transportation. I guess I got on a plane once, but other than that, I can't do it. So the fact that someone can get up every day and get on the subway or get on, like, take a taxi or anything, I applaud you. I'm not sure why I can't do it. It's just something I don't do. I'm not really a person that does well around a lot of people, so maybe that's the thing. But either way, kudos to everybody in New York. Free train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. That's that asthma. Ground zero. I'm on all four sides. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm really trying to hide, like, the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to ask for yeah, really sure, specific I'll be there. directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know. She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass, and my like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, Joe, go on the internet and look up Adam Clayton. <laughs> Did he kill a bunch of white people? Dude, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton. Fuck this shit. <laughs> So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Because remember, your dick's Pull a dreamer. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? <laughs> so as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like 5 or 4 in the morning, right? I'm staying on, like, Malcolm X and, like, Danny Glover or something, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I don't even know who the hell <laughs> When I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk. Danny Glover will never get a street corner in a black community just because of color purple. I thought I was on like some reality <laughs> show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking I got to walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, yeah. really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? <laughs> like, shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical, like a leprechaun. <laughs> you know? I should have like a little pot of gold, <laughs> like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, like it. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. Hey, that would have shocked them enough that they wouldn't have done anything to you. I guarantee that. But it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But, you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes got to go through the same shit, though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? Kind of, just yeah. Just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just <laughs> less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. When you get to the farmland, it's like... You lean and you're all fucking cool. <laughs> 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2 degrees. I'm like, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. Eyes straight. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. <laughs> this is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people. Oh, this is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, so there was a time when I dated somebody that lived in like rural America. Like, I'm talking like a house an acre. And yeah, you would get nervous. Like, oh man, what, 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 what's, what's going on? Um, my first actual experience with marijuana happened in that area and I was I wasn't thinking I wasn't being smart at all but wow that, that that's a story I'd have to tell you at some point that was my just know that was my very first time ever experimenting with any type of like drugs and by the way just FYI that's the only drug I've done marijuana that's it but yeah, my first time experience, uh, experiencing getting, being high in rural America. Let me just say that that felt like the longest drive home in my life. 
I, in a way it was it wasn't because of distance but because of speed but you'll 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 get that if i ever tell that story at some point if y'all leave enough likes on this uh video how about uh let's do let's do a let's do a a a, a goal i'm gonna say a thousand likes a thousand likes on this video i'll make a video uh describe my first time <laughs> uh getting high so that that's a whole nother thing but yeah when you're dating someone in the rural area I guess in a sense, it's kind of like what he said, but I still wouldn't put it there, honestly, because with him, he's still taking more of a risk, right? I'm probably less likely to get mugged going to a rural area than somebody going to a, a poor inner city, but um, I guess it depends. Like I can see myself getting harassed more in a, in a rural area. Like somebody who thinks that I, I look out of place, might call the police or something. You never know. Something like that could happen. Um, I, also, when you're doing that, there's another there's another aspect that we have to look out for because him showing up to his girl's place, if she happens to live with family, they're not gonna think too much of her for dating him. Like they, if, if at the most they might crack some jokes or something. If a black dude is dating a white girl, we have to be thinking about her safety as well, because there are some families, not all of them, but there are some families out there that if I pull up looking to take their daughter out on a date or something, and we leave for the date and come back, oh, she's going to hear about it. <laughs> and in some cases, it might lead to more than just hearing about it. Sometimes a parent might disown a child. Sometimes a parent might harm a child and you never know what the hell might happen simply because I took him on a date that stuff does happen now I know it's rare but it's a hell of a lot more frequent than I guarantee his his uh, Bill Burr's girlfriend's family uh, messing with her so let that be another lesson if you happen to be considering dating somebody outside of your race <laughs> you gotta think about the ramifications for your race and the other person's race and weigh the pluses and minuses before you do it now should we be in a position where we're doing something like that i don't think so we should be past that at this point but the fact of the matter is there are people that aren't past it so you kind of got to take that into consideration you could be like there there are certain obstacles that you have to overstep in order to um if you want that type of relationship and that's just something you got to be prepared for but anyway, that's been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bill Burr is always absolutely hilarious. I love the fact that he's able to tackle certain topics and he doesn't, like, it, it's just from a comic standpoint. He don't care about whether or not someone gets offended. He doesn't care whether or not uh, like somebody is uncomfortable with it. If you're uncomfortable with it, you shouldn't have came to a Bill Burr show. Um Speaking of which, I actually saw the Dave Chappelle special not too long ago, and I should leave a review of that, because it's funny that he's getting all this backlash, and I don't know. It's always people that blow. Like, oh, I have a great sense of humor, but it was he just went too far. To... Sure, you got a great sense of humor. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do. I should leave a review of that at some point. But either way, that's been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. I look forward to seeing you guys on a future video. And until then, I'm Devon Da Vinci, and you've just been a little more enlightened. Deuces.